and it's true that day by day we are learning to depend on the Lord we are learning to trust the Lord we are learning to depend upon his word and I hope that's true in each and every one of our lives that we don't have to learn or go through some uh, some uh, some chastening of the Lord oftentimes to learn to depend upon his word as we were singing the, the song that through it all I've learned to depend upon his word and sometimes things may not go the way we want them to go um, sometimes things may not seem to be um, right in our eyes but we need to understand that the Lord is in control and uh, he never falters on his words he never draws back on his word he's not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should turn away from his word but once he says it uh, he, it comes to pass uh, that's why the it's thus said the Lord becomes of so much importance to me because it's the Lord who said those words. He may, must have used earthly mouthpiece to say what he wants to say. He always does that. He uses imperfect people to, 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 to speak some perfect words. And that's the wisdom of God. And that's, the, that's, that's how God has always operated in this in this, in this uh in this age for about 6,000 years he has used imperfect people to preach the perfect gospel and we need to understand we need to trust the Lord not only on big things on big uh, we just don't need to take those big problems in our lives to the Lord but we also need to trust the Lord in small things do we think that there are some things uh, that are very little or very insignificant to pray about do we think oh this is a problem that's very small for me I don't think so God will, uh, I don't need to, I, I don't think so I need to bother God with this problem. But there's a, there's a beautiful hymn which say, what a friend we have in Jesus. He not only bore our sins and griefs, but what a privilege to carry. It's a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Everything, not just the important things of our lives, not just the big things and the big problems in our lives, but everything. Even the tiniest or the smallest problem, because because prayer is something that the Lord has has designed. Prayer is not something human. Prayer is something that the Lord has designed for us to get in touch with Him, and not just get in touch with Him, but have a relationship with Him. That's why we don't use repeated repeated words in our prayers. It's not something that you repeat for ten times, twelve times. That's not prayer. That's recitation. Many people recite a prayer, but we need to pray prayers. We don't need to recite prayers. Prayer is something that needs to come out of our heart. I mean, when you go and talk to your father, you don't, you don't, you don't recite something that you have learned and you keep reciting that to your father every time. Do you do that? Right? We don't do that with our parents. Then why do we do that with our heavenly father? Why do we recite few things over and over again and and as though he's not understood it the first time. We need to, prayer is a conversation. But we need to speak. It's like speaking to my loving father. I mean, he, he loves to hear his children talk. He, he, he's not interested in vain repetitions. And prayer is designed uh, to, to, to get us acquainted with God. The scripture says, acquaint yourself now with God and be at peace. Acquaint. How do I acquaint myself with God? I'm, I'm, I need to go to the Lord in prayer. And prayer is something we need to understand, saints. It's not designed to change God's mind or change God's will. But prayer is something that aligns me in line with God's will. It makes me to accept His will even though I may not understand His will or His plan. And, and, and we can have a prayerless Christian life. We may do, we may doing a, we may be doing a lot of work for God, but it may be a prayerless work. I may be doing study, but it may be a prayerless study. I may be preach, I may be preaching, but it may be a prayer, prayerless preaching. I may teach, but it may be a prayerless teaching. I may, I may, I may live with my husband or my wife, but it may be a prayerless life in marriage. I may be, I must have brought up my children, but not in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, because there was not much prayer behind my discipline. 
It, we need to have a prayerful life. A prayerful life is a powerful life. A prayerless life is a powerless life. And God has designed prayer so that we can get in touch with Him and we can and, and we don't have a prayerless life and a prayerless church and a prayerless preaching or prayerless study or prayerless work. The devil's happy when he uh, he watches this lifestyle. Oh, they go to church, they study the word of God, uh, he preaches twice a week, thrice a week, and he even studies the word of God, he, he disciplines his family. But as long as he's not praying, the devil's happy. And then, but, but God... He, he wants a man or he wants a church or uh, let me put it this way God uses a man or God uses a church that prays and even the future God is to use uh, the church to give one last witness to this world he needs a prayerful church he needs people who meet God in prayer see the Bible is full of people who, who, who are prayerful like David prayed um, and God moved uh, and, and God helped David to align himself to his will and then Daniel prayed Elijah and Elisha prayed Samuel prayed the disciples prayed the greatest example is the son of God himself Jesus he spent time in prayer and some of us pray and experience the power of prayer I hope we all have done that in the past we have experienced the power of prayer, but but we do not value prayer. Now, there comes a time in our life where prayer is not valued. I'm not when I talk about prayer. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about um, how much time you've spent in prayer. Time uh, is not something that's that's count that's that's um, that's valuable. I mean, none of the scripture tells me to pray for one hour or half an hour or three hours. No, it's not something that I put the time to. It's something that I'm led of the Spirit. In fact, the Scripture teaches me to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? The Scripture teaches me to pray 24-7. Yes, that, that's the timeline that the Scripture gives about prayer. So it's not the long, as, as Charles Spurgeon said, prayer or powerful prayer, prayer is measured by not its length, but its strength. How much strength does my prayer contain? And how do I give that my prayer strength? Is by keeping my spirit right. Is by keeping my heart right. If David said, or one of the psalmists said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, no matter how much I pray, and how much I fast, and how much I, I, I torture myself, the Lord will not hear it. He will not. Even if I have a grudge in my heart for one person in this world, my prayer is in futility. In fact, I need to keep all my requests aside and just pray that the Lord help me. Help me to get out of that grudge. Help me to get that grudge out, O oh Father. Help me to be forgiving, O oh Lord. If there is anything that I have done, help me to ask forgiveness, O oh Lord. First, let us get things right and then pray. And then pray. Let's not be under this false notion that, oh, because I spent two hours, three hours, or four hours in prayer, the Lord's happy. No, yes, He will be happy if, if, if I have a clean heart. Create, that's why David said, create in me. Not in my fellow brothers or my fellow sisters. Oh Lord, they don't understand me. Please create a clean heart in them. There's no such prayer like this. But David prayed, create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. So, so that's, I, I'm not talking about, I'm, I, I don't want to spend, so I don't want, I'm not talking about a prayer here in, in, in detail here today, but I'm just giving you a background of, of um, the, the small lesson that I want to bring to you here today about a king in, in, in Judah. And that is King Asa, that, that, that I was saying that, he had, he had experienced the power of prayer, but he did not value pray, prayer throughout his life. And, and this King Asa, and we need to understand things, all those things that are written in the Bible. The Lord has given us this precious book called the Bible. Um, it's not just given there because he didn't have 
he didn't have anything else to give it to us and that's why he's asked he moved people to write some things on some parchments and now we have it here no but every word written in this book is god inspired and there are many churches that don't even use the bible uh, we don't even preach from the bible that those, those those are nothing not not churches but they are community groups they are social clubs they are just there to entertain people but we want to spend time in the word of god we want to learn from the word of god as, as uh, paul said in romans 15 and verse 4 he says for whatsoever things whatever whatever maybe it may be a little sentence uh, uh, that you may see is insignificant but that's put there by God on purpose. For whatsoever things written aforetime were written for our learning. Since we need to learn from 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 the people mentioned in the Bible. We we get we need to learn from them. That's why I need to read this book every day. A person who doesn't read the Bible every day is not is not doing what God has called us to do. We are living powerless lives. This is powerful. The word of God is quick and alive and powerful since we are losing power when we don't read the word of God. Just as we need to pray, we need to read the word of God. And before we read the word of God, we need to ask God to touch our minds to understand and to learn something from the word of God. So this King Asa here, we need to learn something from him. We need to learn something from all the 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 personality is mentioned in the Bible. See, they say that, the, that a foolish man doesn't even learn from his mistakes. An ordinary man learns from his mistakes. But a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. And, and I thank God for this Bible that doesn't only men talk about the good things or the strong points of people. It also talks about the weaknesses of the men of God and the women of God. See, that's why this book is so significant. There, there is more weaknesses mentioned in this book than the strong points. You know why? Because all glory has to be go given to God and God alone. It's not because of these people that they were, they were brave or valiant. No, but it's all because of God that they could live their lives the way they lived. And then they were worked upon by God and they were made ready for the, for the coming, uh, coming, coming kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. So here in, in uh, let's turn to uh, this second Chronicles, second Chronicles and chap chapter 14. I want to take the, 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 the incident mentioned in second Chronicles and not in first Kings because second Chronicles mentions a little more about this King Asa. And I'm not going to read through the entire chapter here, but, but here, Asa is a picture of a Christian that, that needs God only when he decides uh, that he wants to go to God. Uh, there are few Christians that, that they, they decide when they need God in their lives and when they don't need God in their lives. They decide when should God get involved in their lives and when God should not get involved in their lives. So, so here Asa, he becomes king and there is a little peace uh, in, in that land. No, for about 10 years, the first 10 years, there's no, there's no war in the land and the Lord gives him rest, it says in verse 6. But uh, after 10 years, I think there's a, there's a big army, an Ethiopian uh, army, um, with a thousand, thousand, nine, thousand, thousand uh, man army. That means it was a one million man army. Uh, one million, as, as we, in this part of the world, we may call it 10 lakh. A 10 lakh uh, army, men army here, comes against against Judah, against Asa. And there came out against them Zera, the Ethiopian, with a host of a thousand thousand, verse 9. Second Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 9. And 300 chariots and came unto Maresha. And verse 10 it says, And Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha at Maresha. And... Uh, it's a big army and here it says in verse 11 Asa cries unto the Lord his God and said Lord it is nothing with thee to help whether with many or with them that have no power this is a huge army it's almost twice the size of the army of King Asa it's almost twice 
and here he says lord it is nothing with thee to help us uh, whether with many or with them there are no power help us oh lord our god for we rest on thee and in thy name we go against this multitude O Lord, Thou art our God, let not man prevail against Thee. Such a powerful prayer. I mean, how long he must have spent praying this? Just few sentences there, but so powerful. See, a man who kneels before God can stand before anyone, somebody said. A man who kneels before God, a woman who kneels before God can stand before anyone. And Asa realize the value of kneeling down before the Lord. He realized the power of God. And let's see in verse 12 it says, So the Lord was before Asa. It was not the, the army of Asa. It was the Lord. Since when we pray, and when we pray with the right heart and the right spirit, things move. We can, God moves on our behalf. And it says, And the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa, and before Judah and the Ethiopians fled. Asa saw what prayer can do. Just a few words of faith can get a lot done. A few words of faith. It's not, as I said, <clears throat> it's not the length of our prayers. It's the strength of our prayers. A whisper to God can do a lot or can change someone's life. It's not just praying for us, but someone may be needing our prayers. Can we whisper a prayer for them during the during the work during our day? You may be working in the kitchen or on your computer or on the machine, but can you still whisper a word of prayer for 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 the for the one that needs our prayer? They may be in the hospital, they may be in the worst crisis in their relationship. There may be some problems with their children. Whatever problems, I don't need to know what problem, Lord. But if the Lord puts a burden on our hearts to pray for someone, can we can we just go to the Lord in prayer regarding that brother or that sister? Can we leave everything aside for a moment and whisper a prayer to the Lord? And this king now had experienced the power of prayer. But let's see whether he values prayer in his life. And and then, uh, I don't want to read chapter 15, you, you can read it in your free time. I, 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 I urge you all to read this. Read Second Chronicles chapter 14, 15 and 16 and let's and see what the Lord would like to talk to you. See, God will open your heart when you read the word of God. He'll open many, many things in our life will be put in the right perspective. He'll, he'll throw light on, 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 on parts of our life that was in darkness all these years when we read His Word with, with, the, right, with the right spirit. Then we really want God to, to show us uh, ourselves. The Lord will really help us in. So read the Word of God slowly. As my pastor taught me always, don't rush through the Word of God. Go through it slowly. Words by words. Let's, let's see what that verse will speak to you. It may not have spoken to you all these years, but one day that word becomes life. One verse can become life to me. If one verse becomes life to me every day, saints, just imagine 365 verses becoming life to me every day of my life. What a life that will be. What a powerful and glorious life we can experience. So here, let's come to chapter 16 now. And after a few years, this king, uh, after he does a few good things and God gives him rest, it says in chapter 15 and verse 19, and there was no more war until the 5 and 30th year of the reign of Asa. So for 25 more years, there were no wars. But here, uh, there's another king now that comes to fight against Asa, that's King Basha of Israel. Here in Second Chronicles chapter 16, and verse 1 onwards. And this king, it doesn't have a big army. It doesn't have a large army. It says, uh, it says here in the verse 1 of chapter 16, in the 6th and 30th year of the reign of Asa, the king of Israel came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to, the, to Asa, king of Judah. And now Asa knew how to pray. Now this, he had experienced the power of prayer and he had he had, he had seen God working on, on his behalf. 
So now what we think, what I thought that Isa will now go back. He will go into prayer. That's what I thought. That Isa now will go down on his knees. But instead of a prayer, he had a plan. How many times since instead of a prayer, we depend on our plans? There are many people living like that. Oh, I want to plan my future. Let's pray our future. Let's not plan our future. Let's pray our future. It's one thing to plan. It's very, very important to pray. Asa, instead of praying, had a plan on his hands. And this is dangerous. Since I have done that many times. Instead of praying, I depend on my plans. And, and to, to no one's surprise, I fell on my face. But thank God for, for those teachings that have helped me. The first thing that we need to, to go to is the Lord. The first thing that we need to do is pray. And not just depend on our plans and not just go to the medicine cabinet or to the doctors or to the physicians. They are necessary. But they are not the first line of contact. The first line of contact is God. After that, I go to someone else. And now he has a plan. And let's see in verse 2. And Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of God. Now he had put these treasures in the house of God in chapter 15 and verse 18. He had put all the silver and gold in the house of God. And God blessed him for that. And here in chapter 16 and verse 2, he takes all those treasures. Then Asa brought out the silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. This is the king that he wanted help from. He, he, he got those things from the house of God and took it to a man. And it says uh, in verse 3, And he went and, and, and sent message to the king of Syria, saying, There is a league between me and thee. And there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go! Break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And ben Hadad hearkened to King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Eon, and Dan, and Abelmain, and all the stored cities of Naphtali. Verse 5, And it came to pass, when Basha heard it, that he left off building of Ramah, and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, where, where with Basha was building, and he built there with Geba and Mizpah. So he makes a deal with the king, instead of crying out to the Lord, and uh, he gets a little bit of success. So he even gets success. He, he, instead of going to the Lord, he depended on money to help him. How many times we depend on money to deliver us and not on God? How many times we depend on men to deliver us and not on God? So instead of going to the king of kings, Asa went to a normal king. Saints, let's not go to the kings around us. The kings may be our family members. The kings may be our, our bosses on the job. The kings may be our business and our job and our bank. The bank manager may be a king to us. We may go to various kings, but saints, we need to go to the king of kings, and that is God Almighty. And Asa didn't go to the king of kings. He went to the normal king, and he depended on money to help him, and it worked. Let me tell you something very important. Just because something works doesn't mean it's God. Just because my plans work doesn't mean they are God's plan. Just because something that I wanted happens doesn't mean that's what God wanted for my life. Just because something, something brings success doesn't mean God it, it, it was that what it, it was, doesn't mean that that was what God wanted you to do. Now a prophet shows up if you continue reading chapter six. And now a prophet of God shows up and he, he lets Asa know how God felt about it. How God feels when we don't pray but plan. How God feels when we don't seek God and trust God but we trust man. 
this man this king that knew how to kneel before god now had knelt before a man and now the prophet comes prophet hek hanani in verse 7 prophet hanani the the uh, came unto king asa the king of judah and said to him because thou had relied on the king of syria and not relied on the lord thy god therefore is the host of the king of syria escaped out of thy hand he said because you relied on the king basha just escaped your hand if you relied on god you would have killed your enemy it was a temporary relief that asa got it was not a permanent fix and the things that we may use our resources may be able to help us temporarily but it may not give a permanent fix to our problems god is the one who can fix our problems once and for all and he had done a temporary arrangement here and we he said because thou art relied on the king of syria and not relied on on, on god says when when we don't trust god and we uh, when we rely on men and resources we are fools we become fools we are fools when we go to humans for help when we could have gotten god's help the scripture here in psalm 118 let's turn to psalm 118 and was 8 and 9 psalm 118 was 8 and 9 it is better to trust in the lord than to put confidence in man it is better to trust in the lord than to put confidence in kings and princes it's 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 much better sense to put confidence in the lord and to trust in the lord because there is a permanent solution there is a there is a it's not a quick fix god is never in the business of of quick fix no no when we go to the lord sometimes we'll have to wait sometimes he may he may he may he may give us a quick fix but sometimes god may ask us to wait and that wait may be sometime for a long period of time but he is doing something even in that wait for 40 years moses had to wait but there was something being accomplished during that waiting period the egypt was getting out of moses and and so on we have so many examples in the bible this is what we learn this is what i learn from these men and women of god in the bible this is what i learn this is what i this is what gives me comfort and hope that i am not in bad company i am in good company and god makes me to wait i am in good company i am in the company of abraham and isaac and moses and joseph i am in good company so here this king trusted trusted god for the big things he trusted god when there was a big army but he couldn't trust god for small things when the when the problem was small see he wasn't wasn't consistent in his relationship with god he he knew the power of prayer but he did not value prayer and and we see his life ended tragically let's look at the end of his life here in verse 10 of second chronicle 16 and verse 10 it says uh, and after this prophet comes and and tells him the truth and tells him what god felt about about asa's decision uh, he says in verse 8 were not the ethiopians and the libyans a, a, a huge host uh, with very many chariots and horsemen yet because thou did rely on the lord he delivered them out of out of into thy hand uh, the prophet said they were bigger armies huge armies but because you trusted in the lord the lord helped you verse 9 for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him see it's, it all depends on our heart saints it's no matter how much we pray it's how how strong our prayer is and what makes our prayer strong is the right heart is the right spirit is the right attitude and the lord fights and shows himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him and herein has thou done foolishly see when we depend on resources when we depend on people when we depend on princes and chariots a horse is a vain thing in the day of the battle but safety is from the lord 
and he says you have done foolishly therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars and Asa was wroth was then and put that prophet in a prison and he oppressed some people it says and it says in verse 11 and behold the acts of Asa first and last they are written in the books of kings and his uh, kings of Judah and Israel and then at his last in his last days verse 12 and Asa in the 30 and 9th year of his reign was diseased in his feet there was sickness upon his body now and look at this man's testimony look at his end the scripture says better is an end of a thing than the beginning thereof he could have he could have had a good end when the lord corrected him he could have turned to the lord but look at his end he was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great yet yet in his disease he sought not the lord he didn't go to the lord but to the physicians he depended on doctors and medicine of the day but he did not go to the lord what a sad testimony he again seeks man he again goes to the man but he never goes to the law cursed is a man jeremiah 17 that trusts in man and make it arm his strength but blessed is a man that trusted in the lord and make it the lord his strength he he died because he did not bring everything to the lord in prayer saints it's a privilege to carry everything to the lord in prayer it may be the problem may be very insignificant in our eyes but saying the lord says bring to me the scripture says cast all your burdens on the lord big burdens small burdens insignificant burdens or insignificant burdens let's bring or let's roll all our burdens to the lord he thought that money could buy his way out of battles and sickness he thought money and people will help him those are the two things that the people of the will rely on money and people money and 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 powerful people since no one can no one is a present help in the time of trouble the lord is a present help in the time of our trouble so we need we learn some things to the uh, some things from this this king's life and then the first thing i learn is that that i that it's a question that i ask myself that do I pray to God only when I do not have any other alternative? Yes, I may be pushed to the corner, but why should I allow God to push me to the wall or to the corner? Can't I go to the Lord the first time I, 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 I come across a problem? So, so do I pray to God only when I do not have any other alternative? Do I pray to God when when I when I try everything else, yeah, sometimes that's what we do. We first try everything around us, and then when nothing works, we go to the Lord. That's why saints we need wisdom. Wisdom is not wisdom is not knowing everything. No knowledge. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom is 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 something that that helps you to apply the knowledge that you have. See, wisdom is not knowing wisdom is applying that knowledge and wisdom is something that i get on my knees knowledge i can get by studying the word of god and without praying i can have a i can have a have a mind full of knowledge but a heart without wisdom see wisdom is something that makes me to have a relationship with god knowledge doesn't give me a relationship that's why paul even paul said knowledge puffeth up See, but wisdom makes me humble. Wisdom makes me humble. Wisdom helps me to have a relationship. Wise men always, spiritual, spiritually wise men, always have their relationship with the Lord. And I think we have a lot of problems because we did not ask for wisdom in the first place. We just, we just want to use God and we don't want to, want to have a relationship with Him. See, if you, the scripture says in James, isn't it? Let me turn to that scripture quickly. Uh, James and chapter 1. It says, if anyone, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Here in James chapter 1, 
And verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. How do I ask? In prayer. I get on my knees and I said, Lord, help me. I know a lot, O oh Lord, but give me wisdom to apply that knowledge. Lord, help me. Help me to have a relationship with you. Give me wisdom to make some important decisions in our life. Like whom we will spend our life with? Who will be our life partner? We need wisdom, saints. We need wisdom, otherwise our life will be uh, in ruins if we get the wrong partner for our life. See, we need wisdom for that. And then James says, if any, any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. And the Lord gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. See, our Father loves to help all of us children. He will never despise us if we bring some small problem to him. The, the problem being big or small, it's in our eyes. But where God is concerned, every problem is a small problem for him. In fact, there is no such thing called as problem for God. It's problem for us. But for God, it's not a problem. And I need to understand, I need to take that to the Lord. I need to cast my problems in the Lord. And I need to ask for wisdom. And wisdom brings about a relationship with God. I just do not use God to fix my problems, saints. He is not a genie sitting up there that I, I, I just throw commands to him and expect him to work according to my, my whims and according to my will and according to my timetable. See, that's what we learn from the Lord. We just don't want to go to the Lord when we have used all other alternatives. The other thing I learned from this man's example is, in every situation, go to God first. Big or small, whatever the situation is, go to God first. Count on God and not people and things. Asa had many doctors, he had the money, he had the resources, but nobody could help him. Not even his money could help him, not even the physicians could help him. That's why Paul told Timothy uh, to instruct the, the ones that were rich in his church. Here he, he, he tells Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he, he, he tells them to, he tells Timothy to warn them. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17, he says, charge them that are rich in this world that they may not be proud, they may not be high-minded. Our riches can make us proud. But the scripture says, pride comes before destruction. After pride, there is nothing but destruction. And it says, charge them, warn them, that they should not be high-minded. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Riches are always uncertain. The stock market is not certain. There is uncertainty in the stock market. There's uncertainty in this world. We have, we have seen that in the last 14, 15 months. We have seen uncertainty all around us. There's no certainty. People had the money, but they could not get beds in the hospital. People had the money, but they couldn't get oxygen to save their loved ones. People had the resources. They knew the highest people in the government, but those people couldn't get them a bed with oxygen. Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad that I knew that I may, I may have all the money and I know the chief minister of my state, but I couldn't get a bed with oxygen to save my loved one? Money and resources are not going to help us, saints. And if this is just a glimpse of what's going to come in the future. This pandemic is just a glimpse. The future, the future pandemic will be 100 times worse than this pandemic and our generation is going to see it with the eyes are we ready or are we, do we still depend on people do we still depend on resources do we still go to the people and do we still bank on our banks or bank on the government or bank on our resources earthly resources are unreliable but god is always reliable that's what we need to learn in our lives. Whom do I go to first when I'm faced with any issue or any difficulty? Who does a child go to first? The child goes to his father or his mother. That's the first line of contact. A child who loves his father will first go to the father with his problem. Do I go to my heavenly father first? What comes to my mind first? 
first when i when i encounter a problem does my money or does my bank balance or does my contacts come into my mind or does my god come into my mind what comes to my mind my resources or my god do i trust god or do i just use god see it's very important to cast all our burdens to the lord big or small as i said our resources or our money may just may just stop something or give us a temporary fix but it may not it may not fix it permanently but if we do don't learn to pray and value prayer and bring everything to god it will ruin us because our resources can run out hear, hear me our resources can run out but god never runs out of resources he is the great god he is the almighty god just let's not just rely on our experience our knowledge can tell us that oh i have a lot of experience let's let's not trust our experience let not our experience become our god that's what that that's idol worship because i worship my knowledge i worship my experience saints our ex- our expertise cannot guide us to eternity we need god to guide us to eternity we need the lord an example in john the 21st chapter if i am not mistaken when when the fishermen were out fishing in the boat the disciples and they were toiled all night but they couldn't get fish and here a carpenter walks in a resurrected carpenter comes there and a carpenter teaches the fishermen how to fish the fishermen were full of experience but they couldn't catch a single fish but the carpenter with no experience of fishing told them to cast on your right side and they got so many fishes that the net couldn't handle it they relied on experience but they did not rely on the one that made the fishes we need to understand it thing let's not rely on the creation let's rely on the creator big or small let's take everything to god in prayer that's why paul in philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 do not be anxious do not be worried but in everything bring it in prayer see pray bring it to the lord in prayer and with thanksgiving make your request known to the lord that's what let's 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 stop trusting our resources and let's trust the source of everything god is the source of everything we just have resources but god is the source of everything seek the one who blesses not just his blessings don't just seek his favors but seek his face don't just seek his gifts but seek his grace let's seek god first let's bring or let's take everything to the god, to the lord in prayer thank god for a church thank god for the service uh, we are sorry for the for the interruptions we had initially because of the electricity problems i hope we were able to live stream the remaining part my son joseph says yes there's no problem i hope we we were all online and of the lord has been a blessing to us in this service the lord blessed us with this word since we can learn a lot from the characters mentioned in the bible there's so much to learn from so much to learn from just these two three chapters that we read you know. i mean it, it can help us to build our trust in the lord the lord the name of the lord is a mighty tower we can re- run and we can be safe in that tower and the ones who trust the lord will never 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 be ashamed never the lord will uphold them in his right hand they will not uh, never allow your feet to be moved what wonderful promises we have from god's 
Thank God for the church. Let's continue to pray. May the Lord increases our faith. Law and helps us and gives us wisdom from above. Wisdom that comes from above is first peaceable and gentle, easy to be entreated with. It's the wisdom that comes from God Himself. It's a good and a perfect gift from God. And the scripture says every good and perfect gift cometh from God above. The Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. It's a good wisdom, is a good and perfect gift. That's why he said, with all your might get wisdom and with all your getting get understanding Solomon said wisdom is the principal thing wisdom helps me to take everything to the Lord in prayer and we need to we need to seek wisdom we need to have a relationship with God saints our prayers prayer life will change our, our lives will change we'll get into a deeper relationship with God thank God for a church thank God for a service let's continue to pray for all our Loved ones, our brothers and sisters suffering due to this COVID pandemic or even due to some other sicknesses. Let's continue to remember each and every one of them in our prayers. Let's not forget to pray for Sister Pam Goodwin. That the Lord continues to touch her and heal her. We believe in the power of not our prayers. We believe, we believe in the power of the one that hears our prayer. It's not the one who prays. It's the one who hears who, who, who does things. So he's powerful. Let's, our job is to bring that person, bring that need to the Lord in prayer. And he'll work, saints. He'll work and he'll heal those, that shoulder joint, those bones in her shoulders. And she won't need surgery. God is great. So let's remember Sister Goodwin and also Brother Goodwin in our prayers. And also all the brothers and sisters who may be suffering, whom we know, whom we do not know. Let's pray for them. Let's continue to pray for Brother and Sister Senji. They have con conveyed their love, their greetings to each and every one of you and they remember each and every one of you in their prayers. They've, they've asked the church to pray for them also. Let's remember them in our prayers always. Amen. Let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you have blessed us with. Thank you for this word of God. Thank you for being with us in this service and there were no interruptions after the initial interruption, Lord. Thank you for having your hand upon the electricity also. And Father, we pray that you open up our hearts to understand your word. To understand that something that we lack. Oh Lord, we trust people and, our, and the resources that we have. But we have failed to trust you completely, God. Lord, we don't, don't want to trust you conveniently. Lord, we don't, don't want to bring some things to you. Lord, but we want you to be involved in everything of our lives. Every little thing. Lord, we want you to be involved in our lives. We want to open it to you, O oh Father. And help us, God. Help us, O oh Father, the where, where we'll have a relationship with you. And give us wisdom, Father. Give us wisdom. Your, script, your word says, ask and it shall be given. James says, if any one of you lack wisdom. Lord, we all lack wisdom, Father. We all lack wisdom and we ask you to fill us with your wisdom which comes from above, Father. And give us the grace to be humble. And help us to be humble and get more grace, Father. We thank you once again for this day, for this service. We pray for all our brothers and sisters suffering in this body. That you'll touch them and you'll heal them, Father. Good sister, good women, that serve and heal. Heal the of God. We may not be able to see it outwardly, but we know that your healing work is being done in on the inside, Lord. We thank you for touching her and healing her. And likewise, all our brothers and sisters suffering, O Lord, that will touch each and every one of us. Brother and Sister Senji, cover them and keep them, Father, and help them to grow in you every day. We thank you once again for hearing our prayers. We thank you once again for blessing us with your word. We ask all these things through and in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you.